Hey guys, thanks for tuning back into the channel. In today's episode, it's not so good spark news. So let's grab a coffee and we'll chat about what the latest and the developments on my spark order are and what I'm going to do about it. Well guys, uh, so this is the news with the Spark. Last week I emailed the dealership just to see my order number and the sequence that it's going to be in and just kind of give it an update. I know one of my uh, viewers did post in the comments section on getting the order number from your dealer and then messaging GM through their virtual chat and then uh, looking at to see what exactly the status was. So I did that, got my order number, no problem. Uh, the dealer said they're still checking into it. They didn't hear any information going forward forward at that time and then I messaged them and they emailed me in 24 hours so the chat window got all my information said we'll look into it and then email you back so the very next day I received an email from GM Canada and that's where the bad news hit they said definitely the order is in however currently the Sparks plant is at idle due to part shortage and that is all they gave me. There's no other information. There's no ETA. There's no other updates that they can provide at this time. So while my order is still in place, the car is not being manufactured at the moment. I don't know what part shortages that they meant. I did ask them. I said, is it microchip? Is it a materials? Or, you know, what is it? They didn't answer. They just said part shortage. We don't have any other information. And there's no projections on when the plant will start until they get the um, to get the parts on. And they don't know where my sequence of build is. So there leaves me a lot of uncertainty. So I talked to my GM dealer, uh, West Castle here in Pincher Creek, and they've been great. Communication was, uh, you know, going back and forth to the sales manager saying, yeah, they don't have much information to go by. As soon as they hear something, they'll obviously let me know. And they do apologize. They did offer me my deposit back and cancel my order if I do wish so, uh, if I was going to cause long-term uh, heartaches because at this point in time, it doesn't look like I will be getting it for Christmas. Uh, even if the plant starts up in a couple of weeks or so, the projection of producing it, manufacturing it, and shipping it by container ship through the ocean uh, to the Vancouver port and then up to Alberta will probably take at least two months to complete all that. So I was looking maybe in January sometime, and that's if the plant starts producing um, their vehicle, you know, right away. So I had to do some soul searching. So I said, well, that's not going to work. The current truck that I'm driving my Tahoe, love it to pieces, but it's just not going to last the winter time and I'm not going to put any money into it. I'm going to go to a different direction. The business, like I said, those that know is kind of on ice. I do want to kind of reinvigorate it and still do my Cordetti Motorsports winter driving fuel efficiency. So with that, I threw everything back on the table on what to look for. And at this GM dealer, I've just parked here in the parking lot now, we'll walk around, I'll show you the three vehicles that I'm kind of contemplating on. They're just all used cars on the lot. There's absolutely no new inventory here whatsoever. So everything I'm gonna show you is used. The one vehicle at the top of my list is a really good spark equivalent and it's in the same price point so i think it's a good alternative to what i was looking for and i can get it this week if the numbers and it's not already sold so the dealer still has my uh down payment will work all those numbers the one vehicle i did look at was a 2016 chevrolet silverado 1500 i know going from a spark to a truck is totally day and night but I was looking at to reinvigor my business for the motorsports and the training. And so I thought maybe I'll spend a little bit more and get into the truck market. Or I can stick to a small car again, which they do have, or a small little compact SUV. So we're gonna jump out in the parking lot. I'll show you the three that I have in mind. The other vehicle that I have in mind is not at this lot. It's a private sale just north of Calgary uh, near Airdrie. And I'll tell you what that's all about. It's gonna be a very different twist. So yeah, guys, we'll show you the dealership 
it's very windy outside so bear with me with the wind and everything and i probably might lose my hat because it's pincher creek here and it's known for the windy city so we'll go in and uh, try to bear with it and manage it as best we can so let's jump out show you the three vehicles that i'm looking at on the lot let me know what you think in the comments which one you would choose and which one you would go for and some of the plans that i have for each of these vehicles for my channel so let's jump out here and go take a look and kick some tires guys Well guys, this is the first truck actually I was looking at and I'm working out some numbers just to see what they look like going back into a full, tire, uh, full size truck market uh, for my channel. This one here is actually really nice lifted with tires. Again, everything they have on this lot is used at this point. There is no new inventory, so you're just stuck at what they have at the time. You know, it's under the dealer's controls. Of course, they're not happy. They would like to sell you a vehicle. Uh, however, that's not possible at this time. So we're just looking at what we have. So if I decided to abandon the small car fuel efficiency and go back to a one and done truck, I'm going back into a higher price point. Unfortunately, the truck market is stupid, crazy expensive. As you could tell, the supply and demand issue is so evident and it looks like it's only gonna get worse. But this truck here is a 2016 Silver Auto. It's an LT trim. It's got the shorter of the box. It's a four wheel drive. You know, it's got, you know, the nice uh, uh, features in it. Not sure if you can see inside there too good. Probably the window with the lights. I'll go on the other side. It's in really nice shape. I did test drive it. This one's going for about $32,000. And if I put $5,000 down, which I do have, um, the price is gonna you know, drop it uh, below 30, and then your payments you know, will be uh, a little bit around the $400 a month mark, four to 500. Um, I guess you really can't see in there the way it is. But anyway, it's your typical GM interior. This one's not modified in any way, shape or form. It was a one owner. Uh, like I said, it's just uh, 2016 with about 112,000 kilometers. And so this would be the highest price point in a vehicle that I would consider. I do like it, it does offer me the options to do it up. Uh, throw the dirt bike in there, decal it up with Cordetti Motorsports, do my off-road uh, training in it, and also, you know, then anything else that the business uh, will grow into. It would be a long-term pro uh, long project commitment that I would uh, get into. I do like this style Chevy. I think they did a really good job on the front end. I like the way the lights and the grill is and the aftermarket uh, industry does offer a lot of uh, parts and stuff like that. So if you want to spice it up, you can. Except I really don't want to go into that big price point. Again, I just got out of it with my Tacoma and having no car payments is really nice. You know, jumping back into the $500 plus insurance payment uh, for an 84, com 84 month commitment is very, very unattractive to me right now. So while I really like the truck, it's the wrong timing to buy something that is in a very high demand and a very low supply at the dealer markup right now. So that's kind of what I was looking at there. This is a beautiful trail box. Definitely out of sight. So the other one that you can see, you can see the dealer is empty. It looks like they're closing shop just because of the, because of the uh, low, in, uh, low inventory. The other one I can consider, now obviously it'd be dropping the price of the This one is around the $15,000 mark. It's getting into a 2018 Chevrolet Trax all-wheel drive. Again, it'll be fuel efficient. It'll be good on the highway really good in the winters uh, you know you're basically buying a new car and everything else again can't really see inside just the way the window glare is so I do apologize but this one here would be something I can get into right away uh, it would probably be a good year-round vehicle I can still decal it up in the motorsport but I don't know I'm not interested in a bubbly SUV I mean it's got a lot of uh, you know redeeming qualities let's try this again uh, can't really see inside there too good, I guess. Maybe that's a little bit of a better angle. But, uh, it, it, you know, the color's nice. The package is nice. 
the value for uh, price is nice. Um, again, this is something that I do like, it's attractive, but I'm not a really an SUV type of guy. I just, uh, I want something a little bit more sleeker. So, something that is very close to the spark that I'm considering on the lot would be a 2018 Chevrolet Sonic. I really like the sedan profile. It's really close to the spark. It's a little bit more of a upgraded spark, I guess you could say. This one's the L, I think it's an LT version, this one. This one's a 2018 with 83,000K. And it's got approximately 80, uh, what is it, 83,000 K, and it's uh, about 14,000, no, yeah, 14,000 dollars. I think that's what the uh, uh, retail is on it. So again, this is a really nice style vehicle. Comes with the nice upgraded aluminum uh, wheels, so it does accent nice. It's in black, so you know it's a little bit nicer of a color. Not sure if you guys can see inside there again with it. It's an automatic, which you know. Obviously, I wanted a fully uh, a five-speed manual, six-speed manual. I think is in these. They do also come with a 1.4-liter turbo engine. GM discontinued the Sonic, and they were concentrating more on the CUVs. And the uh, market already had sparks, so they canceled this product line and just keep the tracks and the spark. And so they kind of voided this one out to kind of consolidate their manufacturing. Process. But this one would look nice. Now the price point is great. It's not an old car, it'll last you a long time with regular uh, maintenance and care. Um, I can deckle this up to my winter driving vehicle. So that's what I'm gonna do with this winter for the channel is uh, do my winter driving techniques, uh, how to operate a vehicle, cold weather testing and driving. And I know this is an SUV world, we've gone away from the sedans, but the type of application that I'm putting with my channel this is this is fine actually this is pretty good uh, the styling on this car will, will make it look good to deckle it out and to really push some of my uh, marketing for Cordetti Motorsports so this is kind of what I'm looking at actually this is now in first place so I'm gonna be talking to the dealer tomorrow and if all the numbers work out well Tuesday I'm gonna come in and test drive it and then uh, from there, see if we can uh, see if we can make a deal. Again, the glare is not on my side today. <laughs> it's very windy and the sun's starting to set, so it's not exactly friendly outside. So that's kind of this car. Now the other car that I'm looking at is going to be um, an electric car. I've actually uh, emailed a guy to see about a Mitsubishi IMEV, IMEV and there's one on uh, on Facebook Marketplace and they want approximately $10,000, it's a 2016 and they have about 20,000 K on it. There is another one just outside of Edmonton and that one's going for about $6,000. It's got 70,000 K and it's at a 2011. So I'm just working out the numbers to see if that would actually be a good option for me uh, to go electric if, as I'm just driving it back and forth to work. Will the range be good enough? Will I'll have enough reserve capacity? Obviously, I mean, it's a short term, it's a short uh, range electric, so I won't be driving anywhere extensive. So I'd have to probably buy my Dakota or another truck that I'm looking at uh, relatively soon or in tandem with that type of purchase. With the Sonic here, I could just wait on it for a bit until I find something more suitable. So guys, that's kind of where we're at with this crazy world of the automobiles uh, suffering COVID inventory. And this is where we're going to look at, uh, you know, trying to mitigate these problems. So with all that, I'm going to stay out of debt. I'm going to stay out of the hole. I'm not going to go into it. It just it doesn't make financial sense for me at this juncture. So I think I'm just going to get something more reliable, something I can still add to the channel and still give you guys some good content. So we'll let you know, obviously a video will be coming out in the next day or two to let you know where the status is and where I'm going to be heading. But I'd like to hear from you guys in the comment section on what direction should I go? Should I just wait all together? And, uh, you know, we're in and bear it with the uh, Tahoe. Should I actually jump with both feet and get the Silverado 1500 and just make it work? Or go to the Chevy Trax or go to the Sonic? Or 
pull the pin and go electric. So there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of choices and we'll see which one makes the most sense for me. But anyway guys, spark's not gonna happen. I probably will try to make it happen if the channel grows really well and I've got some better revenue streams. I will probably pull the trigger once everything goes back to normal and I can get a 2023 spark. Hopefully they're still in production and they're still using the current design and body structure. So we'll see what time will tell. But anyway guys, I'll give you a quick update. Uh, I'll also actually give you a quick update on my Instagram at Cordetti Motorsports. I'll let you know what the dealer says to see if any of these vehicles that I'm looking at are still available. If not, the hunt still continues. So guys, if you're new around here, thanks for watching and tuning in and we'll catch you on the next episode of Cordetti Motorsports. You guys stay loose for now. We'll catch you on the next episode.